Hello everybody and welcome to the first video for my Ishrat hat which is a knit band Tunisian crochet hat that I have created using this particular yarn here which is by Fruitful Fusion. Um, this yarn that I'm using is her Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend. She doesn't have a name for this particular colorway here but if you do look in the description in this video you'll see a link to her Etsy shop and I highly recommend going and visiting that because she's got some beautiful beautiful yarns on here on there. This particular one is meant to be a sock yarn but it is a extremely soft and squishy so honestly it's it's perfect for use with uh, for hats or um, neck warmers as well. So what I have here is my 4.5 millime millimeter knitting needle. I'm using a DPN because it's what I have to hand but if you have a normal knitting needle that's fine as well for this particular cast on. I have got a slip knot and I have the yarn double stranded for the garter stitch knit band that I'm going to do. The strand here at the bottom is my tail and it's nice and long on purpose because I'm going to be doing a long tail cast on. This double here goes to the ball itself. So I've got strand on the bottom, ball on the top. And to do a long tail cast on, for those of you unfamiliar, it's my favourite one. A little bit tricky but absolutely worth it because it's a stretchy cast on. What I'm going to do is create a little parrot face like so with my hand. And with the beak of my parrot I'm going to go through my two strands like so. Remember, I've got the tail on the bottom, I've got the ball on top. That's kind of important. And my parts, uh, feathers here, I'm going to grasp the ball yarn with those, turn my hand, and then grasp the tail as well. So I've got all four strands in my hand there. Then I'm going to make my part squawk, like so. Simple as that. So you've got the yarn going behind both your index finger and your thumb now, and all the yarns are being mannered there in my hand. After that, it's simply a question of following the direction of my thumb. So I take my knitting needle in front of everything, slide up here, catch behind the yarn on my finger and carry on back through my thumb again. I release my thumb, pull the tail and that tightens up like so. So once again, I'm going to go in the direction of my thumb, catch behind the one on my index finger, back down through my thumb, release my thumb and pull tight. That's three there. We need 11 in total. Now if this seems too much like a cat's cradle or like you're going to get tangled in your yarn, any other cast on will do just fine. But this is absolutely my very favourite one. It's a lovely strong cast on. It gives you plenty of leeway for your, your loops when you do your first row of knitting. And oh dear, there you go, up through my thumb. As I say, it is nice and stretchy as well. So it does mean that when you get to your seam, you don't have this mean little piece of fabric at the very start, which is far more narrow than the rest of your knitting. It, uh, it stretches nicely with the garter stitch itself. Here we go. So I've lost, entirely lost count. Let me see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. There's my last one there. Like so. Okay, so there we go. We've got uh, plenty of tail left, which is absolutely fine. At this point, bear in mind, it is very easy to mistake the tail for the ball. So identify that, put it to the side, so you make sure you're knitting with the correct strand of yarn. And at this point, crocheters, all you're doing here is a very basic knit stitch. Um, it is, it's going to be garter stitch, so we're going to knit every single row and it gives us this lovely bubbly texture you see on the fabric in front of me here. Um, so. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the tip of my working hand and I'm going to loosen up this stitch a bit and slide it in in the direction that the needle, the other needle is pointing. Yarn behind like so and draw that yarn over through, up and off. Loosen up the next one, do the same thing in the direction the needle's going. Yarn behind like so, pull it through and off. Loosen the next one, pop in, do your yarn over, through like so, and off. And it's just a matter of repeating this action. So it's needle in, yarn over, back through the loop, and pop the loop off. Travel your stitches up towards the tip of your needle whenever you need it. Do it every time if you want. Don't go too close to the edge because they will all fall off. Just like so. Very, very simple. And you're doing 11 stitches per row. So when you're done with your row, your 11 stitches will have transferred from your resting needle to your working needle here. You'll always end up with 11. If you end up with fewer, you have dropped a stitch, ladies and gentlemen, and it's time to go searching for it. 
you drop a stitch it ends up like a ladder in your tights it just slides right back down your work there we go and the last one there in we go and off and that's your first row of knitting done Crochet is doing this for the first time. Congratulations, you are now accidentally a knitter. Um, there we go. We've got a little bit of knitting here. And you can see there's got a bit more fabric on the bottom than there was before. And simply, when you are done with your knitting, when you've transferred all your loops from your resting needle to your working needle, you simply change hands so that your working needle is now empty and your resting needle is full again. At this point, I like to slip the first stitch because it does tend to get a bit stretchy anyway and it gives you a better edge to work with. So all you're doing is transferring it from one needle to the next and then knitting the remaining stitches as you had done before. In like so, yarn over, back through, like so, yarn over, back through. And this is just, every single one of these stitches is called a knit stitch. A purl stitch, you may have heard of those, they're a different thing entirely. But because you're doing every row with knit, you end up with a kind of a rustic, bubbly, fluffy looking uh, fabric. You don't end up with your traditional jumper fabric that you get because you're not doing the purl stitch, which is required to make that fabric work. And you can see there, I've got my first row of bubbles <laughs> underneath my stitches there, which correspond with these guys here. So once again, I have got my working needle is full. So I'm gonna change hands. Once again, I am going to oh dear, slip my first loop. So I'm just going in the same direction, same, same hole entirely as the needle itself and just slipping it straight off and then starting into my knitting again. So for Ishrat, the hat itself requires 140 rows, which happen a lot faster than you expect them to. Um, if you're looking to do your average woman size hat, uh, pattern which is around 21 22 inches or so in diameter um, the hat itself can be increased and decreased by taking multiples of 10 off so instead of 70 do 60 if you want a smaller hat do 80 if you want a larger hat anything in between will not work because the crown itself is worked in five segments so it needs something that's divisible by five and since each one of these rows turns into or each two of these rows turns into one on the on the, the band itself you do need multiples of ten. If that seems too boggling don't worry about it it'll become clear as you're working through it. So once again I'm going to slip my first stitch and I'm going to knit my second. The band itself is double stranded this is partially to ensure that it is a nice tight elastic fit on your head and it's partially to make sure that you've got extra warmth around your ears. Um, also, because knitting tends to be a little less dense than Tunisian crochet that we use later on, I figured doubling up the yarn on the knit section will mean the whole thing will have a similar density and a similar texture, um, hence the reason for two strands of yarn on this. We don't use the two strands for the whole entire thing. It doesn't eat up a ton of yarn. Um, you will get about a hat and a half out of each uh, skein of Fruitful Fusions Merino Cashmere Nylon Blend. Um, so if you buy two skeins, you can get three hats. There we go. Okay, so do one more and then I will leave you to it. So the cast on is a little more complicated than the cast off, which I'll do at the start of the next video along. So once you've got your 140 rows done, use a row counter if you, uh, if you have one. That can be quite handy. And we can get to the next video where I'll show you how to cast off and how to get started on the crochet section of this whole thing. So there you go. So you've got a few rows of garter stitch there and you can see all those lovely little bubbly fluffy bits on it. They're on both sides of the fabric itself. Now, if you lose count of where you are, by the way, here's a little bit of a sample I have. Each double row will give you a, a peak and it will give you a valley. So if you're counting and if you can count 70 valleys, if you can pull it apart, you can kind of see them separately. So one, two, three, four, five, where my nail is going six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. If you can count, count 70 of those, then you have your 140 rows done. Um, and then you're good to go, or your 80 or your 60, or however many you're putting on the passion itself. But that's it. That's basic knitting for crocheters. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. And I do hope that you give the, the, the hat itself a go. All right. Thanks very much, guys.